Alrighty, automotive friends from all around the world, it's time once again for another... Another well-bought episode of V8 Radio, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> another well-bought episode yes. of V8 Radio. I'm your that, host, that Kevin Oste. I know that term. To... We'll get to that in a sec. I'm your host, Kevin Oste, joined as always by our esteemed co-host, who is now sporting a wicked tan, Mr. Mike Cuball Clark. Hola, amigos. Yes. Como estas? Yes. Mikey's day job afforded him an incentive trip to Mexico, where uh, he was undoubtedly uh, promoting V8 Radio to the natives as best oh, he could. Oh, we're huge in Mexico now. We're huge in Mexico. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we I... gigante in Mexico. Yes. We are Sabado Gigante. Yes. That's easy. the big Saturday, if you're wondering. Oh, um, very nice. So, yes, well bought. A, a great auction term. Thank you. A, a nod to the just recently ended Bear Jackson auction. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I don't know if that term exists anywhere else in the universe, but I don't think it does. I don't think it does, but it does it, it well for our podcast it does now. <laughs> it's a well bought episode. And you know what? Amen. At the price it is well bought. It's, it's uh, thank you. Thank you. I thought so. Yes. Our friends over at the Round 6 podcast uh, handed out some stickers that said free and worth it. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> I like that. I do too. I like it. Our, ours will be well bought. Very good. All righty. So uh, for those veteran listeners of V8 Radio, we uh, first we thank you for being veteran listeners of V8 Radio. Our, um, our popularity is growing, which is uh, very cool. We appreciate that. But those people know that um, this is a show about cars and car stuff generally. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we always try to start our episodes with an automotive trivia question, which is... Um, it's really the height of the excitement of this whole operation, <laughs> especially because uh, we ans- ask the question in the beginning and we provide the answers at the end uh, so that you're kind of conned into listening to the whole nonsense in between. Uh, maybe some of the listeners are aware of the fast forward button thing, but I'm not going to remind them. No. No, no, no. So, uh, Mr. Q, uh, do you Boy. have a uh, trivia question? As a matter of fact, I do, Kevin. No, right on. And let's... Uh... Let's unleash it onto the masses. Okay. Um, You know, as cars evolved, as they became uh, uh, redesigned, and uh, they became safer. Which one, Kevin, which auto manufacturer was the first one to debut to the masses a all-wheel, a four-wheel ABS system? And, for the bonus, what year and model did it come on? That's it. That's the bonus. You just have to name the manufacturer. To okay. really win, all wheel ABS. Wow, that is a good one. Uh, ooh, oh man, mm. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you know Studebaker was known as having the uh, the first all wheel disc brake system here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Avanti, and there's been various forms of ABS over the years, Mm -hmm. but the first all-wheel ABS. All-wheel ABS. And when and who? Jeez. Um, Well, it's it's who. Who and then when. Is is the question, but what what year and what model did it come out? All right. I'm just going to go by general BS knowledge, hopefully stacking the odds in my favor, that it was a Mercedes-Benz product. Uh, even though it, it could have been a, a Volvo or it could have been any number of others. But I'm going to say it was a Mercedes-Benz product. Okay. And I'm going to say it was earlier than I would think. Um, ABS started to become kind of prominent in the 80s, but that doesn't mean that's when it was invented. And the fact that it was all wheel, you know, today's most of today's systems are all wheel. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, a lot of systems are no longer standard abs is an option really? in a lot of cars yeah you believe that I, it's an expensive thing so you got to check your your window sticker when you know next time you're you're huh. buying a car to make sure that your abs is in fact abs and that just breaks so well, you'll find you'll find out during that first panic stop anyway you will you will uh-huh. i'm gonna just throw out 1981 mb 19 
1981, Kev says. And then on the on the car itself, I'm going to say it was on the S class. The Sunda class. Yes. And now I would like to move on because that question sucks. <laughs> 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 it does. I, I agree. It, it is kind of shady. I it was apologize. Good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll find out at the end of the show, Kev. I'll be flying oh, the L. Did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I've got one that I'll reciprocate. Oh, of course you will. Now, you, of course, know the engine <laughs> as the Buick Nailhead V8 engine. I have heard of that. Yes. But what was the official name of this V8 when it was introduced back in 1953? Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't think a question could suck more than mine, Kev. Oh, hey, good job. <laughs> well, you know, the, the nailhead was a nickname. It, it was never officially right. called the nailhead. So, so mm-hmm. what was it? And I'll tell you what, to make it uh, uh, odds in your favor a little bit, the engine was known by a couple different names over its life cycle, so I'll take either one of the two most common names for that engine. Okay, uh, the nail head. All right. Um, it was called that because the valves were pretty straight up and down. Isn't that right? Uh, correct. It had a long yeah. stem with a, a kind of a smaller head, and they mm-hmm. were they were perpendicular, I guess, to the to the ground right. as the car right. went down the street. So it was like nails on a board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, the nail head mm-hmm. official name was. They had outstanding breathing capabilities. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. The intake port was the same size from the manifold all the way to the cylinder head. Nothing choked right? down. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, a good, good that's engine. That's pretty cool. Nice. Mm-hmm. We'll call it the, for lack of anything really coming to mind, and so our listeners can get out of their excruciating pain. <laughs> or get out of yours. Or get out of mine, yeah. I will say the Turbo Fire V8. The Turbo Fire V8. Now, that does sound like a familiar type of engine. Yeah. Well, there's a turbojet, is, uh, yeah, I think yeah, it was a yeah. Chevrolet, yeah, yeah. I okay. think. Or turbojet fire or something nonsense like that. But well, Turbo hey. fire. Yeah, turbo fire. All righty. The turbo yeah. fire V8. Uh-huh. We will find out later. Yeah. Dynamite. Can't wait. I know. Well, you're going to have to. <laughs> we just got into this mess. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what else is happening? Um, what else is happening? Um, Big muscle car scene down there in Mexico? Uh, well, you know what? There's a lot of air-cooled Beetles down there. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Because they, they were produced until like 2009 yep. for the Mexican market. And... I couldn't believe all the ones I saw. Usually, if you see one here, it's like a real oddity, or and, and not only driven on a nice day. Well, in Mexico, they're all nice days, pretty much. But mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. but there was a lot of them on the, on the road, just tooling around, and you see a couple just completely stripped on the side of the road, just <laughs> sitting there. It was crazy. Did you see but, uh, uh, many vans, VW vans? No, I did not. You know, what's interesting is the van was also produced, I think, into the 90s down there. Is that right? The, the, the microbus, you know. Yeah. But, but most of them are water-cooled. So they have radiators here, on the really? front. I was not aware of this. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the first time I was in Mexico was uh, also for an incentive trip many years ago when I worked for uh, Peterson Publishing. And right. um, driving around, there was this... Uh, this VW bus, and I said to one of the guys, I'm like, hey, check it out. Somebody converted that to, to be a, a water cooler. There's a radiator on the front. You know, I wonder what engine's in it. And they said, yeah, that was converted by a company called Volkswagen. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? <laughs> right on. <laughs> okay, Yosti, first round's on you, bud. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Cruising so what engine the, was in there? I have no idea. I, huh. I chose not to pursue that conversation any further. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Much like our trivia question. Right. Yeah. I mean, I did hear of people in the states converting uh, 
air cooled buses to uh, with a 1.8 T engines, which was a pretty versatile. Oh yeah, water cooled Volkswagen engine. Yeah, those were and would really make it scoot. Is they, they, those had really good power. Right. So especially compared to the uh, 40 horsepower air cooled, yeah, you know, exactly. Pile Two liter. That came in those yeah. Things. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, well, we got a you know a lot going on here at the shop again, as always, which is cool. Uh-huh. We're very thankful that uh, always a bunch of fun projects coming. And and uh, this past week, uh, one of our old favorites arrived. Our buddy Paul's car showed up. Yeah, you know what? I don't know if if I'm more excited about this or he is because <laughs> I am I am jacked about this about his car being in there to get finished up. Yeah, well, finished up is a relative term, right? Well, yeah. running and driving. Running and driving, right. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the um, 1962 Buick Electra. It's yellow. It's a convertible. And the car has quite a long history. I mean, obviously back to 62, but I mean in recent mm-hmm. history. Um, this was the car that, that David Freiberger, uh, when he was at Carcraft, and Rob Canan, when he was at Hot Rod, picked up on the street for, I don't know, I think a grand or something. And it... it didn't really run that great and it looked kind of kind of ugly but they bought it for a cheap fun car craft magazine project car uh, primarily because they just wanted to tool around an old convertible for a little while mm-hmm. so it didn't have a top and and it didn't uh, the interior was kind of blown out so they rebuilt the original carburetor on the what kind of engine uh that would be a nail head kind yeah of. very good which is also <laughs> known as We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the turbo <laughs> the fire. The turbo fire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they they took it down, did a what what Freiberger has called the world's worst paint job, uh, oh, and, nice. and just kind of sanded it down and filled some dings and dents with filler and, and sprayed it in yellow. And I think they took it to a one day paint place because they had those in California, where uh-huh. you could bring a primered car in and they just spray it for you. Just bomb it with paint right yep and it was yeah. uh what i was originally thinking was close to daytona yellow which mm-hmm. looks awesome on corvettes and and maybe a 69 camaro but really not too much else um, uh-huh. but on this car it's it's the whole thing is bright yellow back in the day they put some moon discs on it on the hub oh, you know, wow. hubcaps and uh, they just drove it around right well that was I had been working with those guys for a while at that point, and uh, I, I had heard that this car was coming up for sale. And the bones, I thought, were really solid because this was a California car, so it wasn't rusty at all. You know, a little surface in the trunk, you know, here and there. Right. And it was powered by a Buick 401, uh, but it's a bucket seat console car, which is really unusual in, a, uh, in an Electra. In a big car, right? Fully, yeah, right. Yeah. And factory air and power windows and stuff. And I thought, this cool. thing, you know, it doesn't need to get away. So I called my buddy Paul um, that I grew up with. We reference him here and there on the show. He's a, an engineer for Navistar Truck. And he was living in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana at the time. And I said, hey, you need to, uh, you need to come get this thing. So he, he had a, uh, an S10 pickup truck. Oh, and he rented a tow dolly from U-Haul. And drives all the way across the country. And in fact, on the way out, he stopped in uh, a little town in Illinois where our, our other old college roommate grew up who had a 69 Mach 1 with a big block in it. Oh, wow. And he dragged the, the Mach 1 out from Illinois to Southern California because the, the third guy's name was Kyle. And Kyle and I lived together. And Paul and Kyle and I all went to college together. So he brought Kyle his Mustang and then hitched up this... Uh, this nail head Electra, which is longer than his truck by a solid, yeah. you know, 48 feet. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, brings the thing over to my apartment where I was living. And I said, this is cool. And because of the kind of, you know, not that great friend that I am, it was Thanksgiving weekend. Uh-huh. And Paul uh, was dating a girl and she had come with him. And I said, well, it's nice you guys come out for, for Thanksgiving and to pick up this car. Uh, can I borrow this tow dolly? <laughs> and he's like, uh, what? So at the same time, uh, my dad had our 62 Galaxy in his garage in his new house in Arizona. 
and he was working on it, finishing up the restoration at that time. And uh, he had turned the key to start the car, and the wiring harness burned because something oh, shorted out. Just a little under dash harness. Mm-hmm. But it freaked him out, and he's like, he doesn't want this car burning down his new house in the desert. And even though it was Thanksgiving weekend, it was still, you know, 90 degrees in Arizona. And right. So he said, he, my dad called me and he said, you need to come pick this car up or I'm going to push it out on the street and I don't care what happens to it. Oh, boy. So Paul shows up. I grab his tow dolly. I borrow a friend's truck and head to Arizona and pick up the Galaxy, tow dolly that thing all the way back to Southern Cal, put it in my uh, garage and then reconnect to Paul's truck, and then he hitches up the uh, the Electra again and drives it all the way back to Indiana. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, Paul. <laughs> exactly, you know, and, and uh, you know him. He had you know a good time over the weekend. I was gone, I think, thirty hours, just straight oh down and gosh. back. You know, just literally dropped one off and picked one up. And uh, Paul was telling me that on his on his way home, he was driving through Texas. He took forty back instead of going 80 north he took 40 cross country not not the longest interstate in the country correct I-40. you are correct how about that yeah yes, one. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy, we have a, a loyal veteran listener here yes yes we do <laughs> <laughs> so he remembers getting hassled in texas because uh, he was at some truck stop and a bunch of guys are giving him a hard time because his trailer is a two-wheel dolly, and his load weighs more and is bigger than his truck. Oh, sure. And they're reminding him of how bad this could go. Yeah, yeah, that's not dangerous at all. No, not no yeah, whatsoever. No, no. Uh, yeah. But he made it home and um, and actually drove the car around for a little while. He put tires on it and fixed the wheel cylinders cool. and stuff. And um, soon thereafter, the nail had developed a, uh, a pretty wicked rod knock, mm. and he was... You know, only a couple of years out of school at this point, and uh, you know, a, a fledgling engineer with with Navistar, and was trying to price out how much it would cost to rebuild the nail head, and it became kind of cost prohibitive quickly because oh. even even then, this is you know, twenty some years ago, it was about twenty years ago, it was expensive to build those engines. Mm-hmm. So he had in his home garage at his parents' house um, a small block Chevy that came out of his sixty or his seventy one Nova that was his high school car, right? And his Nova got disassembled and put away, much like my old Buick Riviera did. Mm-hmm. And uh, he thought, you know, what I'll do. I'll just grab that small block out of the Nova, throw it in the Buick, drive it around, and it'll be fine, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to finish up. <laughs> 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 because Alrighty. yeah well you know like like everybody life happened his uh-huh. job changed his ability and, and space to work on the car changed right. he got married he had kids he bought a house uh-huh. and and you know how it is you know so oh boy do i you know we all yeah. do so it was yeah. um you know the priority it, it slid down the priority list but over the past few years he's been working on it uh, trying to get the engine in and the front brackets on and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. taking things off and, and powder coating them and whatnot. Where it got tripped up is um, it's a small block Chevy with a 204R automatic overdrive. Mm-hmm. And this Buick had a nail head with, uh, I believe it was a Slim Jim two-speed transmission. Oh, wow. Um, so the transmission tunnel needs to be expanded and oh, some fabrication okay. needs to happen. So that that's kind of where the, the project <clears throat> hit the brakes okay. um we had actually used that car in a and i think the second episode of va tv is that right back when we were airing on on the men's channel in like 2005 wow and we did a disc brake swap on it back then and and that's right. still there and it works which is good yeah and scarebird uh, brackets i watched it yeah 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 that's it yeah. we're like the number one resource for scarebird brackets because of that video by the way is that right i get calls every probably every other week <clears throat> still about no that. kidding yeah well it's on wow. youtube now too but yeah uh, and people call me up and they're like so how does a car drive and i'm like yeah, i don't know <laughs> i'll let you know as soon as we drive it <laughs> right which hopefully will be pretty soon so um he boxed up a bunch of stuff and dragged it down to our shop last weekend mm-hmm and uh, we have our punch list of uh, what we need to do. So I'm um, going to get a prefab tunnel and cut it open. Oh, and cool. Get it all fit and kind of check over some of the lines. He, he's got the same problem that, again, a lot of us have, and that is 
you know, the front end bushings are new. Yeah, I just, just put them in. They're new. Yeah. 18 years ago. Right, right, you know, right. So now they're dry rotted, even though they've never been driven on. Right. So as, you know, and I'm not condemning anybody, including myself or Paul or you, for having these long-term projects, but mm-hmm. that's one of the bummers is that, you know, you might set everything up, and then by the time you get to it, you know, we find in our own shop, for example, a lot of times things are out of warranty by the time we turn the key uh-huh. you know, because it took a while to build. Right. Or they wore out in the garage, you know. Hmm. But it's a fairly straightforward project, and, and we hope to have it uh, together. So our, our goal is uh, for him to drive this car back home, which for him is about 320 miles or so, uh, right. the weekend of the drive-in cruise. Oh, how good would that be, man? Mm-hmm. I, am, uh, I, I know that can happen. I know based on the scope of work that, uh, that I think you have to do, that should be super doable because you, you, I mean you're not you're not blowing the car apart to paint it. No, nope. right? You're not you're not doing anything to the frame. No, nope. you're just you're just getting the getting the trans tunnel put in, getting everything put back together. Right. Making sure everything is buttoned up and drivable. Yeah. So there's a few uh, changes that that we made uh, regarding installing a tilt column. So we're gonna we're gonna put a mm-hmm. tilt steering column in it, and we're gonna make a floor shift. Now this car, I mentioned it had buckets and a console, but it was a column shift. It's interesting. Yeah. So huh. there, in the original console, it's got a tack at the top, you know, like a like an old Impala. It's pretty cool. And yeah. then it's got an opening for what could have been a shifter. Okay. So we're gonna try and we're gonna. I think we're gonna run a low car. Um, I like those low car shifters. I don't know if you've ever shifted one, the style that's actually mounted to the transmission. Oh, no, I don't think I have. Yeah, a lot of the low car transmission or, uh, shifters mount right to the trans, and then the, the stick comes up through the hole. And when you shift one of those, it's not, uh, it's the most solid feeling shifter yeah. because it's bolted to the trans. You know, it's not like yeah. a, a console that's plastic and flexing or the floor that could have some give. Right. So those are really cool. My concern is that I don't know where the, the relationship of the shifter hole is going to be to where the transmission is in the console. And the transmission could be further forward or back or whatever. I see. I see. So we might end up just doing a cable-operated shifter to simplify that. So our goal is to kind of, you know, just let's just get through this. We're not trying to reinvent the world here. Right, 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 right. And you have a pretty cool gallery already started on the uh, V8... Uh VHP and Resto page. Yeah, that I noticed. yeah. On our uh, photo gallery link. Yeah, um, the photo gallery. Yeah, you yeah. Can it see looks, that. yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, and so he, far, yeah, I he had it. done a lot of great work on on getting the inner fenders powder coated and, and the hood hinge springs and hood mm-hmm. hinges and all that stuff. So most of it should, you know, dare I say, you know, bolt back together mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> once we get uh, once we get the mechanical work done. Um, and it's funny, you know, because now today, luckily, he's in a place where uh, he's got a little more resources than he used to. So where in, in the past, it, it, the conversation was, yeah, where am I going to take this radiator to have it, you know, boiled out? And today it's like, no, no, we're just going to put a new radiator in it, you know, right. and save the time and aggravation. And, right. and before it was, you know, what car could I yank a tilt column out of at the junkyard? And now it's like, no, 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 we're just, we're going to get an idea to column. We're going to get a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something that's not already worn out. And needing a rebuild. Yeah, and all and need that. a yeah. rebuild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that. We're going to put some gauges in it. Um, the 204R is a Grand National spec, so it's, it's the good mm-hmm. one. Uh, oh, good. We have a little bit of a concern of how it shifts uh, because some of those cars shifted pretty hard, and this is mm. a uh, this is a big cruiser sled. It doesn't need to be mm-hmm. a neck snapper. <laughs> right. Um, but we're gonna put it together and see what it does, and then if it if it's great, it's great. If not, then we'll address that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In those cars, What's the, go ahead. That's a small block in there, right? Yeah, it's a it's a three hundred and I think a three hundred and fifty seven cubic inch small block Chevy and. Paul had built this engine in high school, and it was in his Nova that he drove around for a long time. And we actually featured a little bit of this on VATV too a long time ago. The, those videos are not online. I should probably get them online for this project. Yeah, for sure. But we did a uh, uh, a Holly Systemax package on it at Fast Times uh, Motorworks and dynoed it. 
Really? And, yeah. And the system axe package was cam heads and, and an intake. And, and the first thing we did, though, is, is Paul ripped it out of the car. Out of, well, he had his engine stand for, you know, at that point, 15 years after high school. And then oh boy. we dragged it down to uh, Fast Times Motor Works and dynoed it to see what his high school build could do on the engine. Dyno. Okay. And the engine ran pretty good. I think it was 300 horsepower, 330 or something, 320, I think, to, somewhere around there. But the problem with it was is it was Paul's, you know, high school kid engine so um he made the amateur mistake of overdoing it uh on the silicone on like gaskets and stuff oh, and it okay. starved out the engine oil pickup ah and ended up wiping it. out the bearings mm. so then it got kind of a mild rebuild at fast times and it got bearings and at that point it was like well you know we might as well put some parts on it so that's when we did the system x upgrade and i think at that point, it made almost 400. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. So it's a good running engine. Uh, the concern there, though, is it might be a little out of character as well for uh-huh. the Electra. Cause for the, the Electra. I mean, where where's all that power being made? Is it, you know, mid-range and upper RPM? or um, you know, what, it's, kind of, what kind of torque is yeah, it? Yeah, it's not a super torquey engine, again, uh-huh. being a small block Chevy. But it's got, uh-huh. it's got a cam in it, you know, and it's got some lope. And, uh, okay. you know, the big Buick is supposed to be kind of smooth and quiet. So, mm-hmm. again, we'll see how it does. And it's it's a flat tappet cam, but it, it was already broken in. So, okay. I don't, you know, we're going to be careful with it, but hopefully we don't have any issues there. Mm. Uh, so, it should be cool. And he already said if it's too much camshaft, you know, for the brakes or whatever, um, right. we'll, we'll put a roller in it and mellow it out. Okay. And, Go Maybe ahead. throw a hydro boost on it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they work. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> right on. But we're trying oh, to man. eliminate the scope creep here, you know. The right, yeah. Might as well yeah, syndrome. Yeah, I know. yeah, sorry, Paul, I'm spending your money already. There you go. <laughs> see how you are. So we've been just kind of going through his parts and trying to read his handwriting on what he wrote on this stuff. And <laughs> He'll be making Kelly go crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny when the when the car came apart because right now the front sheet metal's off and and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That was mostly Kelly's doing. Is that right? Yeah, because it was in his old garage, and right. when we made the decision to put the small block in it, you know, it's like, well, should we pull the hood and the fenders, and you know, maybe do some detail work? And he was like, well, I don't know. And next thing you know, Kelly's like, sure, let's go. And wrenches are flying, <laughs> and fenders are going across the room, and everything else. So she basically took it apart the last time. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, that'll give, a, give some good access to the frame if you want to throw some paint on it and make it look halfway decent. And all right, that right. Stuff. Which he did. He did. It's all painted yeah. up and ready to go. So. Oh, nice. All yeah. right. That's yeah. a big car. My gosh, there's a lot of car there. It is a big car. And mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a drive shaft. Uh, situation it's a, a carrier bearing two-piece drive shaft is it yeah oh well it's eight blocks long so it, yeah, you know, that's true that's true so we're gonna have to shorten that when we get the, the 200 in there and then right the, this car is you know it's a little bit off the mark so you have to approach these differently you can't a lot of times get certain parts you know you, you can't put a ring and pinion gear in this thing because oh. the the, yeah. the originals are all gone, and right. nobody makes one, mm-hmm. so whatever gear it's got, it's got, uh, which is it's good for that four speed, two hundred four R because it'll have a, a lower first gear, okay, uh, to get it moving. But the rear end, I think it leaks at the pinion, so we're gonna put a pinion seal in it put and put seal axle seals okay. and stuff. We just gotta make sure we can get them, and I, I think I found all that stuff already too. So yeah. it'll be it'll it be won't great. be a dull project. No, no. And not that you really have any dull projects in there. No, not, none of them are dull. But uh, so again, it's going to stay with its yellow paint, and you know, yellow, okay. stay kind of looking like it is. And uh, and again, he's got young kids, so he doesn't want to worry about his son dragging a bicycle across the side of it, or something like that. Something that you're probably a little familiar with. That I am. Risk. I I, I know that pain. <laughs> yeah. I've I've heard that drag. That's okay. So, and this this thing needs a would need a paint job anyway. So I'm not too right. 
not too broke up about it. So. No. And that's the right way to do it. You know, it's like there's no way you're going to prevent that kind of stuff. No, so, you know, never. You'd drive yourself crazy if you had done the paint first and then had the kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's people that, that do that, and it's it's challenging for them. Cars always got to be covered and yeah. a lot of yelling unless you in the have garage. It, unless you have it stored off-site somewhere in some climate control place mm. all by itself and nobody touches it, then, then you worry about somebody touching it. Like somebody getting in there and right. messing with it. So it's always something. Yeah, yeah. You know who was actually really good at that was uh, was our buddy Pete, who owns the Reloaded Camaro. Uh, oh, yeah? Because his son, Brian, I think was seven or eight when mm. that project started. Um, wow. And that car came, we said last time, that car came to our shop for some maintenance, and it looks like the day it rolled out of the booth. I mean, it is... It's amazing. It is amazing. Good on you, Pete. His, uh, his son, Brian, um, was not reckless around it in the garage. And I, I've been in his garage. It's, it's like yours and mine. The car, it's a, you know, it's two car, two and a half car garage. It's not like it's offsite stored. Uh-huh. Right. Um, it was for a while, but recently it's lived at home. And, and luckily they, you know, I'm sure Pete laid down the law about proper mm-hmm. conduct around the car. <laughs> <laughs> So, Amen. You know, Brian, you Amen. Know, I apologize for that, but uh, glad that nothing ever happened. So that's good. Yeah, for sure. Oh man. Yeah. That is cool. But yeah, Paul sent me some. Um, he sent me some pictures of uh, when he took the car down there, and he took some shots of the uh, the metro van. Oh yeah. That he sent me. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. All is it, now. Is it is it done done or are you still no. doing still uh, do more? We we're, we're gonna put graphics on it and uh, oh that's right you know wheels tires and that kind of stuff so you'll you'll see the big you know reveal on it soon uh, we still got to land on that but um, everything else I drove it the other day it's crazy it's cool it's nice it's uh, that is so awesome it's a different experience I mean it, it drives great it's very tall um, <laughs> it's peppy though it, you know there's no concerns about how it drives at all I mean it's it's cool. it's as if a, a manufacturer had built it. You know, it's really t- testament to the team of pulling it off. So it drives really nice. Very cool, man. Yeah. So speaking of garages, uh, I had a little time last weekend in my own garage. So last time we talked that I was able to do the some top maintenance stuff on the Galaxy. Well, this right. past weekend I did a headlight relay install. Oh, how'd Galaxy. that go? It went, um, well, the package said plug and play. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know on a different car it could have been so oh really oh boy the whole purpose of this thing is that like on your gto and on this galaxy mm-hmm. uh when you pull the headlight switch it makes contact and all the electricity comes from the battery through that switch and then to the headlights mm-hmm. sure so if you break out a tape measure you know you're talking 20 feet of wire, uh, you know, that right. you're pushing electricity through to light the lights. Mm-hmm. And when wiring gets older, the the electrical resistance goes up, so it gets harder to push that juice through mm-hmm. it. And in my case, I had put halogen headlights in this thing oh, um, wow. a while ago. Again, probably 20 years ago. Seems like yesterday. Right. And um, every once in a while, you'd be driving, and, and if you hit the high beams and... and and then went back to low beams, everything would shut off. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not uh, good. Yeah, not no, good. No. The worst one was Kelly and I were driving the car on the 17 um, freeway in Arizona coming down from Flagstaff into North Scottsdale, I guess. And it's this twisty mountain, you know, 65-mile-an-hour oh, road, and we're doing 75, 80, and all of a sudden, at night, and all of a sudden everything goes black, you know. Oh, brother. Right. And so my first thought was, it's the dimmer switch, you know? Uh-huh. So I stop at the AutoZone or whatever it was, probably out there, the uh, the CSK or Cragen or something, and uh, bought a $4 switch, changed out in my, my parents' uh, driveway there in, in Scottsdale, and I said, okay, let's go. And that wasn't it. Oh, man. And what it turned out is that halogens, they draw a lot more. Sure. You know, and oh, yeah. uh, Trevor pointed out that they um, there's a circuit breaker, and they just pull enough oh. juice, especially when all four of them are on, 
uh-huh. that it would trip the breaker. So he's like, you got to put relays in. So mm. the relay takes power right from the battery in a real short run, and mm. the, the on-off switch for the headlights basically just tells the relay to turn on. It tells relay kick on and off, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a great idea. I mean, it makes you wonder. I mean, I guess back back in the day when these cars were designed, I don't know if relays were very prominent or... If well, you had like a horn relay that, and you had like well, an, yeah, an AC that's true, relay. Did. So there yeah. was some in the cars, um, but they just didn't think to do headlights, you know, and they didn't yeah. have the halogens either. So they just had a regular beam. That's true. And they probably I mean, didn't plus, have the I mean, as that switch ages as well, it's going to, all that juice going through, there's good, the switch is going to get hot as well. Oh yeah. It's a fire waiting to happen. Yeah, exactly. Inside the car. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, right. I mean, uh, unless you have, you know, a completely stock electrical system running stock bulbs and have new wiring and you drive in the daytime only and you drive in the daytime only i'd say relays are a definite like a requirement yeah yeah to to do that kind of funny you know channeling my my dad again you know because yeah yeah. burning down the house with you know now it's my house and that is (laughs) so uh he's got it out for you yeah right so i jumped on amazon and i found a uh a relay kit there's now most of your you know, major aftermarket wiring companies make relay kits. But this one was interesting to me because it was supposed to be a true plug and play uh, Mm -hmm. from a group called Octane Lighting. And the bulb sockets are ceramic. So they're supposed to be more resilient to heat or whatever. Okay. And what you would end up doing is disconnecting the leads from your headlights and then plug one into this harness and then just connect the harness to the headlights and then connect the other end to power and you're done. Okay. Easy. Sounds easy enough. Yep, except for the fact that on my particular car, the headlight harness needs to pass through a hole in the core support that's probably five-eighths of an inch. Of course it does. And the headlight connectors obviously don't fit through that because they're a bigger ceramic thing. So the plug-and-play became unpinning all the connectors and feeding the wire through and then reconnecting the connectors which really yeah. wasn't it, it's not that big of a deal because the the connectors themselves have a tab on them and you can take a small screwdriver and push the tab down. oh right so right it right. wasn't cutting and re-splicing it was it was just pop the tabs out um so i did all that and then uh, i thought you know i bought new headlights for this thing probably only five years ago so i might as well put those in yeah. i mean they're brand new they are <laughs> and uh <laughs> And then to wire the uh, the power in the ground side, um, I did a little bit of a cut, and, a cut and splice to kind of clean that up. But what a huge difference. Is that right? Oh, yeah. It was totally Much brighter? Worth, yeah, totally worth it. And I've learned cool. that i got a couple of blown out headlight adjusters that I have to fix. Because, oh, you know, is that right? There's a reason why one was always, I apologize to everybody that approached me. <laughs> it was like up and to the left, you know. Uh, so I'll get I was that. Telling you out. that you're number one as you go as they go by, oh, and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'd wave, hey, cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's great. So I, I would call that a success um, for and, sure. And I needed another little garage success. It was good, a good thing. It's soul cleansing, man. Soul cleansing. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh-huh. And, and again, it's not without uh, complete frustration because this car, it's a 1962 Ford Galaxy, which means the headlights are surrounded by these uh, almost foil-like headlight rings uh, and oh boy. trim rings. And they're all different, uh, the two outers and two inners and left and right. And I, I've accumulated probably nine or ten of these things over the years, okay. and I swear they're all different. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh jeez! The screw holes don't line up, and, and and a few of them are smashed and have been kind of tapped out, and some are original, like clear anodized zinc uh-huh. plated almost, and some are oh, wow. that's been stripped and polished. They look different, you know. And, mm. and there's a couple of unobtainium screw or, or or spring nuts that when you put the ring on, you drive a screw through it into this little nut, and the nut actually stands off the headlight bucket and locates the ring. 
Oh, so wow. I'm missing some of those. And uh, uh, I found the original Ford part number, believe it or not. And there's one organization online in the entire breadth of the internet that sells uh-huh. these things. Of and, and the nut is small enough, you know, a little trim screw screws into it. So it's smaller than the size of my thumbnail. And they're oh, like, man. you know, five bucks a piece or something. Oh, man. Uh, but I only need three of them and, and it'll help. So I got to get those yeah. on order before I can put the rings back on. But Five bucks a piece. I mean, it's not a lot of money, but no, it but should be 50 cents. It, well, it should. But these, this guy's been sitting on them forever and advertising yeah, them. Yeah, I guess. He's got them and I need them and that's okay. You know, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, and at the same time, the headlight rings... The last, uh, I found a f- set of four of them, NOS on eBay, and they were like well over $500. <gasps> so, Yikes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting back to uh, just kind of polishing up the dingy ones I got and uh, call it a day. Yeah, so. it kind of reminds me of those on the, like, what, 65 through 67 Galaxies with the vertical headlights. They had those, I think it was those Pyrex. Uh, yeah, yeah. Headlight covers, yeah. those things are like finding hen's teeth. Yeah, those, so those were on the R-Code 427 cars. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a guy with a 65 Galaxy here in Plainfield that will show up to Plainfield Cruise Nights every so often, and he has a set of those on his car. Yeah. It's not a 427 car. It's so, a somebody, 390 car. But he got them from someone and put them on. They look, they look pretty cool. Yeah. But uh Yeah, the they, last time I saw a set of those they were eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. 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 That is something. They're cool though. Boy howdy. They look neat. I don't know. They do they look, look neat. If, especially if you have you know, if you've got the car, you know, you, you need them. Oh, true. You gotta have them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're uh getting ready next week to go shoot another round of muscle car of the week. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact. So uh uh it reminded me because that's that's a place where I can see multiple sets of those, kind of in a row, uh, in the brothers' collection because they've got gosh dang it they've got a few of them yeah well the museum is coming together so is it uh, yeah it's from from what I've been seeing it, it's really cool and uh, hopefully we can shoot some video to to promote this thing um, that was the intention all along we just haven't they haven't been ready enough <clears throat> to uh, start publicizing the whole thing yet okay. but um it's gonna be neat i mean there have been some shots like uh, on the interior that, yes uh, like like that uh that impala that you did the sweet burnout in was right inside that museum right yes you cannot Involved do that anymore because mm. it is jammed with cars is it oh boy yeah and and That's neat displays and and stuff so that was one of the reasons why they wanted us to do that we did a couple of interior burnout shots one was that uh that Impala convertible uh, 427. It was a 396 425 car. Uh, mm-hmm. But another one was the uh, Yanko Deuce Nova indoor. Mm. And that was, I think, our 150th episode. And we did a, just a horrendous burnout in that thing inside. And that one didn't even have neon lights or anything up yet. It was just all black except for our lights. Oh, man. And the, the house lights. And that was, that was fun. Yeah, I bet it's all fun. Hard work, but fun. It is fun. And, yeah. you know, I, I always tell people, including myself, that I'm incredibly blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity to do this and, and to shoot these cars and to get near yeah. them and, and share them. Yeah, I mean, we, we get, we as viewers really get a lot of benefit from it as well. I mean, who who doesn't want to see some really high-end, cool, high-horsepower muscle cars every week that... You know, running and driving and, you know, doing burnouts. Because who doesn't like a good burnout? I don't know who doesn't. <laughs> I don't. Well, there, we, yeah. We've had comments. Really? People. No, see, that's that's what already. they were meant to do. It's what they were born to do. Uh, you know, they're calling us childish and irresponsible and, you know. Yes. How dare so you? what? <laughs> so what? Yeah. The, so the, the message it's under, came through. It's under controlled env- in a controlled environment. It's on a closed track, quote unquote. So yeah, it's, it's not like you're putting anyone in danger. No, the whole show is shot on private property, you know. Exactly. exactly. So there's that, and it's their cars. Yeah. And, and they're insured, and they have a team to repair them if anything happens, and, mm-hmm. and they have the means and resources to do it. So there ha- you go. Have at it. Yeah. Yeah. 
burn, baby, burn, what I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there'll be uh, a few more of those coming up soon. And we have a f- another full load of cars. So lots of cool stuff. Nice. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Some, some that have never been seen. Some some types of cars that have never been seen on the show. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So, All right. Nice teaser. Yeah, there's some people that have made repeated <clears throat> kind of requests on... on commentary on social about you know can you show one of these and, uh-huh. and and it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't understand you know what how this all works it's not right. like every week we search the world to find a particular car right we are i hate to use the term limited because the brother's collection is pretty unlimited but there's right. only certain cars in it you know so when somebody's uh-huh. asking us for a uh you know a 77 Matador, you know, I, I, they, don't, they don't have one, so it's not going to be here, you know. Right. Uh, but a particular car that people have asked about quite a bit is going to get some some airplay because they, they picked That's one cool. up. So. I think what people forget, too, is, and we talked about this on a, on a previous episode when we did a, a behind-the-scenes of Muscle Car of the Week, that, I mean, you go into it understanding what you're going to shoot, and you have to shoot pretty much the whole season in a week's time. Right, so, four days. Four days. So if somebody comes to you, you know, a week before you, you're scheduled to go out there, hey, can you shoot a 70 Corvette 427? Well, if that's not on your on your spreadsheet to do, eh, right. I don't know what... what it, because you have it set to where you're not doing the same type of car week after week. Correct. And, and we can right. shoot them in a row. You know, I can shoot right. three Corvettes in a row, but they don't get... You know, they'll get shown all in a row. Correct. They don't, they don't get distributed that way. But the other thing is that the cars need to be set, you know, a pretty good time in advance ahead of time so that they can all have gasoline in them. Right. And they can and, have... And they're the, running. They're running. They're, the ch- chokes right. are fixed and the tires are mm-hmm. aired up and all that jazz because it's mm-hmm. not like, again, you're not going to take a, uh, you know, a, a Hemi Cuda convertible down the street and put gas in it at the local right. gas station. All the, all the fuel's sure. got to be brought in on site. Mm-hmm. And stored in a in a crank tank and right. you know all the batteries and I mean so right. I think we've got twenty six cars on the list. Okay, yeah. For this next round, so so they need to know ahead of time as well, so they can prepare. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they yeah they exactly. Need to know. Yeah, and, totally. And that kind of goes back and forth. I mean, we look at, at what's available, and and I always take suggestions because you know they, you can't go wrong. They don't have right. anything that sucks. Right. Um, but it's like well. You know, they might say, yeah, this 428 Cougar is a great car, but we drove it yesterday and it's, you know, not happy. So can we substitute something else? And mm-hmm. and the team there is just so tremendously cool to work with. They are, mm-hmm. they're willing, they're happy, they're able, they're, they're accommodating. They're, yeah. it's great. It's just, an, yeah. you couldn't do it without guys like that. Um, yeah, I met one of those t- caretaker guys at yeah. uh, Muscog Private National. Super cool guy, super chill. Yeah, totally course i would be too if i had that gig my gosh well that that gig can grind on you too though i mean there's yeah, a lot of, I, I lot of pressure with maintaining those and and <clears throat> same guys are involved with you know the construction of the, of the museum so oh i see they uh so they're, plates, they're busy they're busy and their plates keep getting piled <clears throat> higher you know so mm-hmm. we appreciate that they can take the time to let us do the do the show too um which is also you know the impetus of the owners of the collection as well you know so they're kind of right whatever they want they get you know and we're happy and and extremely happy to do it <laughs> yeah oh for sure yeah so yeah it, it's a great yeah, thing. That, i mean that's that is that is something else man how you how you got into that that's crazy yeah so episode 302 airs this week for those who are yep. following mm-hmm, um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh that last one was pretty cool with the comparison yeah, the, right. The, the Mustang and the, and the, what was it, the Challenger? 71 Challenger Hemi Convertible uh, compared to a Boss 429. And you'll notice that those cars have absolutely nothing in common. There's no, no. Way, why would you compare those? You know, they're just not even close. And, well, they're the same, the same class of vehicle. Yeah, right? kind of, not, but not really. I mean, sort of. The, the Challenger was kind of a luxury car, and the Boss 429 mm-hmm. is a purpose-built, you know, oh, yeah. race car, essentially. And, but that was kind of why we did it. Because uh-huh. it, it really didn't make sense. And 
that one, every once in a while, we'll do an episode, and I, I really got to kind of kind of push it out there and step back and just kind of pray See that what happens. I don't get splashed with the backlash. Um, and you know what? Everybody loved it. I couldn't believe it. People were calling well, that our best episode ever. It was pretty <laughs> solid. I mean, I dug it. I, I really, I really, I mean, I like them all, but that one, I... I like the comparison episodes that you have. Well, I appreciate so, that. Because you can see you see two different cars um, that were on the street at the same time back in the in the 60s, and you can really see how they compare with one another. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, how much uh, did you get any backlash for that that midget car that you, that you had? Oh, the on? King Midget. Uh, King no, Midget. That that has a 100 <laughs> percent like ratio at this point. Is that right? Yeah, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I think it's your goofy grin <laughs> as you drove by <laughs> the, the the smoky burnout. Yeah, the monster. Uh, <laughs> another Challenger doing a burnout, and and yeah. you can hear the horn. Beep, that's real. That's right. not a sound effect. That's actually hitting oh the horn. And, and one of our cameramen uh, slash director is like, don't hit the horn because you can add that later because it might sound like crap, you know, uh-huh. in, the, in the shot. I hit it anyway, and it, we left it yeah. and it sounded fine. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was cool. <laughs> but that, uh, that Challenger uh, boss episode thing, um, you know, like you're saying, people, people dig the comparisons and... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what it does too is it 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 doubles the potential core audience of an episode, you know, because now I, the Mopar guys that, are going to yeah. watch, the Mustang guys are going to watch. Sure. Um, and then one thing we've learned is we cannot say versus, we can't say Challenger versus Mustang, be- uh, because we are not racing them. First of all, right, right. Uh, so Ben, um, our editor, came up with the which would you choose concept. Okay. And that was a win because people posted comments, oh, I would choose this one because, and oh, I want this one, uh-huh. you know, and, and they engaged, and that that's what it's all about. That was great. Uh-huh. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. So, I accept that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, you bet. You uh, yeah. bet. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll end up doing more of those, so if you dug that, more to come. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we need to have the GTO versus Chevelle uh, oh, comparison. All right, all right, all right. So keep that in the back of your hat. I'll refrain from saying, aren't those the same? (laughs) And hey, folks, thanks for listening to this episode of VA Radio. (laughs) We're signing off for good. I know, I know. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. One's a Pontiac and the other one doesn't matter, right? That's what you were going to say. Pretty much. Pretty much. Love the Chevelles. Uh, Love them both. We could do that. They've they've got, uh, I think they've got ample resources. I'll I'll write that down. Actually, I think what would be cooler is the uh, like a, a GTO and a GTX comparison. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool because those are similar yeah. in market. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Food for thought, you know. Battle of the, of the GTs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, as this show releases, um, our next episode will have already been aired. And that one is uh, it's right. going to be a... Um, 65 Shelby GT350R Ooh. race car versus a 2016 Shelby GT350R. Oh. So it's the same car, 40 years apart, essentially. You know, 45 okay. years apart. And um, and the question is, had, had the philosophy changed? Uh, you know, is, is oh. the new one worthy of the old? You know, and, okay. and I'll tell you what it is. So that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. Yep. I, uh, both are pretty slick cars. I like that 350. I like that newer one, though. Oh, boy. It is an awesome car. It, it is a, just so sweet looking. Yeah. And the performance of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a Ford. And I'm not a Ford guy, but right. that thing that thing checks a lot of boxes. Oh, it sure does. Uh, yeah. It's got stuff that I never even knew about. Like, the brake rotors are... Um, the rotors are floating. Is that right? So it's got an aluminum hat, and mm-hmm. then pointing out of the aluminum hat in a radial pattern are pins that locate the rotor. Oh, wow. So the rotor isn't bolted to the hat. It's pinned on floating a floating mechanism. Oh, wow. So that the rotor can heat For up and contract and contraction? without cracking. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is there is so much in that car. Uh, the wheels are carbon fiber on the R model. Right. And they're painted black. Uh, and, and the reason why they painted them black is to meet a federal standard for longevity. They can't 
they have to be UV resistant because the UV oh. breaks can break down the uh, the break resins down the carbon and the carbon. Fiber? Yeah. Mm. So it's kind of a bummer because the, the the carbon looks killer, but uh, oh, for an great. OE application, they got to paint them black. Huh. Um, lots and lots of cool stuff. So great car. Well, good. Looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah. Or that was a great I mean, one. I already saw it. It yeah. was Kevin. <laughs> phenomenal episode. <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, yes. The magic of shifting time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Speaking oh, of Mustangs, I, I saw a neat one in my neighborhood today. I think it was about a 66 convertible, and the license plate said, Bucket List. Nice. Yeah. B-U-K-T-L-I-S-T, I think. It was great. I like it. Yeah. That is cool. Great car scene down there by you guys, too. Great uh, car scene. Yeah, there are a lot of cars around here, and, and it's nice. The yeah. weather's getting nice, and people are they're out driving them, you know, and, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what we like to see. It made me think yeah, of... Uh... Go ahead. When I was uh, I was dropping my daughter off uh, to her, her art class, uh, had nothing to do with cars, but uh, uh, when I was driving back I, in downtown Plainfield, I saw uh, sitting out in a driveway looked like a probably a 71... Um, Regal convertible, Buick convertible. Seventy-one would have and, been a century or centurion. Yeah, and a um, full behind size. It, yeah, behind it was not was like a fifty something. I it might have been a Pontiac or a Buick. Fifty, God, probably fifty six, fifty five, but just just sitting nice out. Yeah, it was cool. I'm like, summer's here. Yep. The time is the time has come. I love it. Yep, they're all creeping out. Yeah, definitely love that. Yeah, good times. Man, yeah, that was nice. I'm looking forward to looking forward to a new season of uh of car shows and um, you know, cruise nights and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And um I really want to try to get out to this the the V eight cruise drive in mm. this year. Not not just for the drive in itself, but I want to see Paul's car as well out there. Well, hopefully yeah, you'll so. be able to see it, uh, you know, because he doesn't live terribly far from you. Right. That's true. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to be visiting a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> if the plan goes, you know, according to plan, which you know what they say, a plan is a list of things that don't happen. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I had told him last weekend that it'd be cool to take the Galaxy and the Electra on a road trip. From oh, yes. Here, and he could drive his car home and not transport oh, it. Yeah. With the toe dolly, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that, got to happen. That gives us both a little incentive to make sure all these things are roadworthy and mm-hmm. and uh, and all that jazz. Because you know, it's funny. He and I grew up together, and I don't think there was any time that we both had our cars like running together. Oh man, <laughs> hanging out and stuff. I mean, a, a few small instances, right? You know, before the time I moved away and he moved away, and all that stuff happened. And, Mm-hmm. So we, it's taken a long time, but we might be able to pull that off. So that'd be cool. Oh, sweet. Good times. Yeah. Do we have a movie yet for the driving cruise? Uh, well, we did, and then we changed directions. Oh, really? Yeah, we threw a popular vote out uh, because that way I'm off the hook. You know, right. we can just blame everybody else if, it, if they don't like it. And everybody landed on the Hollywood Nights. By a strong uh, margin, and that's a good film, but it was only, yeah. somebody added it to the list. Um, we uh-huh. didn't have a closed list, and I think that was my fault that I didn't realize that, I, there's a website you can search family-friendly movies, and that one had It's like, probably not on there. It's not, oh, it had nine strikes against it. Oh, boy. Because it had language, it had nudity, yeah. it had, it's got, yeah. it's an R-rated film, you know, and, and yeah. we don't want this to be, this has to be a family-friendly thing. It's got a I playground, gotcha. and there's always kids there, and that's that's part of the yeah. draw. We're trying to show kids how it's fun to play with old cars and get out and do fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So we are in the process of changing the film. Okay. So I've been uh, a little bit gun-shy about making this announcement publicly because I don't want all these okay. people to yell at me about... You know, well, then why uh, was it there? You know, we wanted to see it. But again, somebody added it to our poll. I see. I see. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I mean, you have a good point. It's not a family-friendly movie. No. Great movie, but yeah, not family-friendly. it's family a funny friendly. film. And, and I yeah. actually thought about, you know, so I looked. Is there a TV version? Is there a PG-13 or you uh, know, a different cut? No, there's not. 
Oh, gosh dang it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well. It is whatever you decide, we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a little insight. It, it, it might be the Blues Brothers. Oh, cool. Um, and that one, in addition to having the, you know, the, the, the awesome car chases, the music is great, and you know, mm-hmm. there's lots of stuff. And that's an R-rated film, too, but it's not anywhere near as offensive as the other one. There's a few language things, but that's about it. And they're not. Is there really? There's not super bad ones, but there's, you know, when when Jake tells the penguin that you know she's up S Creek, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but today, you know, that your girl's probably yeah, today that's sailors, not right? that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe seventy nine, it, it would get garner an R rating, but now not it's still PG thirteen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be it. We'll see. Cool, cool. Look forward to the announcement. All right, me too. (laughs) All right, man. Well, my my trivia button is uh, itching. So uh, because I like to lose, so just (laughs) just lay it on me. Because you're you're historically been a a terrific guesser when you didn't know. I know, but not this time. It's okay. What you is? You're right. Not this time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I know. All right. Kevin, I asked you um, what auto manufacturer first implemented an all-wheel modern ABS uh, brake system. And as the bonus, what year was it and what model car had it? And your guess was our friends out in Germany with Mercedes-Benz. And unfortunately, Kevin, that's not correct. Yep. Um, our, um, the first manufacturer to give all wheel, four-wheel ABS was actually Chrysler Corp. Really? Yeah. Go the Chrysler. Ni- the 1971 Chrysler Imperial. There we go. Yeah. See, a lot of other manufacturers had a two-wheel set, set up. Yeah. Mercedes-Benz included, yeah. but not. But Chrysler had the first all-wheel setup. Very good. See, I, I knew it was earlier than I thought, too. Yes. Yes. A little bit. Only 10 years. Huh. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I lost, but it gives uh, me an idea yeah. for our next trivia question. So I'm going to write this. Down. Oh, damn it! All right, go ahead and put your <laughs> bullet in me now. <laughs> uh, hold on, I got to make my note here. Okay. Uh, so my question to you was: You know, it is the Buick Nailhead V8 engine. But oh yeah. What was one. the official name of this V8 when it was introduced in 1953? And your guess was the. Turbo Fire V8. Yeah, and that was uh, a great name for an engine, but not not the name but not for Nailhead. No. <laughs> so the 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 Nailhead came out in '53 and ran all the way to '66, and the early ones were the Fireball V8. So Fireball V8. I had fire. You did. I had fire. Yeah. So you should get a half a point there. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I'm only a half a wrong. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> And the other, the other, eventually it became to be known as the Wildcat V8, of course. Oh, gosh dang it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a gun, I knew that too. You suck, Michael. So we both uh, lost. Yeah. That's Mm-mm-mm. all right. It's all right. It's okay. It happens. It does happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot to me. Yeah, it happens to me too. Well, that's all right. Yes. Not to you. You pulled Henry Ford out of your keister last time. I well, don't know. He, I, he didn't I want to be in there anymore. No, <laughs> evidently not. <laughs> evidently not. Yeah, not uh, this time. But I'm glad yeah. it was Chrysler. I always appreciate American innovation and the big three when they were uh, when they were really innovating. Yep. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Cool. All right, my friend. Well, this has been a great experience. Uh, we appreciate everybody listening, and uh, we have a new source for V8 mm. Radio, which is called. Podchaser.com. There you go. Podchaser. And yes. and uh, how triumphant was it today to see little uh. old VA radio in the third position of the most popular automotive podcast ahead. Ahead of Car Talk. Of our half deceased <laughs> friends at Car Talk. We win. <laughs> we win. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got you, Car Talk. And uh, I think we're up at about 15 on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, we are on 15 on iTunes. I looked at uh, that last episode we had, showed a lot of popularity. It did, huge. For, what, for, for whatever reason. Who yeah, knew? I don't 
know. Who knew people liked this show? Uh, well, we appreciate that. It's uh, yeah. it's not just us talking in the garage, even though it kind of is. Uh, it's mm-hmm. enjoyable, and I'm glad people dig it. Yeah, so, for sure. There is another place. So Spotify, iTunes, right. Stitcher Radio, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, our Facebook page, VARadio.com, and now Podchaser as well. Yeah. Um, the, the cool thing about Podchaser is it does give you the option. It's it's a good platform for Android users. It mm. gives you the option to uh, rate the show and leave a review as well, unlike Spotify or Stitcher, I don't believe, does. Or tune in radio, I don't believe does either. So yeah. if you if if you are begging to leave a review for the show and rate it, and you use an Android device, you can use Podchaser.com to do it. Yep, yep, yeah. In fact, I looked at it just on my desktop computer too. Yeah, I did. I did as well. Yeah, yeah. And like iTunes, it lets you rate the entire show, like the whole podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Podchaser lets you rate individual episodes, so that was cool. Exactly that that too. Yeah. All the ones well, that I won the trivia contest got five stars. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much every every stinking episode out there, wasn't it? No. And all the ones that, that I lost got zero stars. Well, hey, how does that work? <laughs> well, not this one. <laughs> no. We both got brown stars for this one. <laughs> yeah, another brown show for Kevin and Mike. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, again, appreciate it. It was fun. And... Uh, For Mike Clark, I'm Kevin Oste on V8 Radio. We'll keep it under 100, and uh, we'll see you next time.